Hello again, I am Blunty. This is a Drobo, a new model of Drobo called the Drobo 5C. The C in its name is because it has a USB-C connection on it now. And for those of you who have never actually heard of a Drobo before, it's an external disk drive, basically, but it is a very sophisticated one because it is not just a disk drive, it is up to five disk drives and it uses a, uh, a RAID system. And for those of you who aren't familiar with what a RAID is, just briefly, it's a way of using multiple disks as one disk. It's much more complicated and sophisticated than that. There's many different kinds of RAIDs and different ways to arrange them and everything, but at the very basic level, it is using multiple disks as one drive and disk arrays in RAID format are used for various reasons, either reliability or redundancy or speed and whatnot. But the difference with a Drobo is it uses a slightly tweaked version of RAID to enable it to do some very fancy stuff, including being able to just sort of uh, whip out one of the drives at any time. And uh, the thing will automatically recover itself. If you did that with a regular RAID system, you're kind of boned. The biggest benefit of Drobo's proprietary Beyond RAID system is the fact that it's completely self-managing. Beyond RAID does what traditional RAID system does and more and protects your data against hard disk crashes and stuff like that, yet it is simple enough for anybody to use. In a traditional RAID system, all drives must be the same size, or if they aren't, you're wasting space because they are effectively limited to treating all drives in the array as the same capacity as the smallest drive in the array. Drobo's disk drive grab bag system does not have that limitation and is intelligently managed to make sure your data is safe and the software even does the tricky math that would result from mixed capacity drives with an easy visual readout of exactly how much space you have, how much is free and how much you've used. Also here in the software dashboard are the usual kinds of things to do with formatting the drive and naming the drive and other configuration tools. You can even dim the device lights if your Drobo sits in a place where its bright lights would be a distraction. Another special trick Drobo's Beyond RAID enables, should you want to move from a single disk redundancy system to a double disk redundancy system for super duper extra protection of your data, you can, and you can do so with the click of a box in the software. Trying to do the same thing in a traditional RAID system, moving from single disk to multi-disk redundancy is much more limited and requires, in fact, a complete nuke and pave rebuild from the ground up, a full restore of the entire array and all data on it from scratch. I have done it once in my life, it is a massive pain in the ass. But on the Drobo, if you choose dual drive redundancy instead of single drive redundancy, which basically means you're still 100% protected even if two of your drives somehow manage to simultaneously fail, you'll sacrifice more of the total storage space of course, it needs room for all that backup data, but it can be done very easily. You flick the option in the software and the Drobo automatically and seamlessly reorganizes itself on the fly to accommodate your setting. And in a similar manner, you can instantly and immediately expand your storage at any time by simply adding another hard drive to the array or swapping in the smallest disk in the array for a bigger one. And again, this can be done on the fly. You don't even need so much as a reboot. You plug in the disk, the Drobo says, oh, hey, there's a new disk there, automatically, seamlessly repairs itself, reorganizes itself and accommodates the new drive. And all of this is simply impossible on a traditional RAID system. It doesn't work that way. And as I mentioned before, those are limited to treating all disks in the array as if they were all the same capacity as the smallest member anyway. Now, outside of the technical subjects I'm brushing across the top of here, believe me, it goes much deeper than this, but the every person explanation of what a Drobo does is just that. This is a multi-disk array system with built-in redundancy and data protection that pretty much any dummy can use. You don't have to be a tech head or a computer nerd or a system administrator to understand what it does and what you need to do to increase your storage or fix a problem if a drive fails. You can just get on with whatever it is you do that is meant to require a huge automatically protected easily expandable storage system for your files that can heal itself and keep your data safe if something goes wrong. And beyond the redundancy of the Beyond Raid system, the Drobo also has built-in power failure protection. So if there's data in the system that hasn't been written to the drives physically yet, or as we nerds call it, data in flight, and your power goes out, the Drobo has enough juice in an onboard rechargeable battery to squirt that data in flight to a section of flash memory to keep it safe until the power comes back on. So your data is safe on that score as well. Drive installation is completely carrier-free, as you've seen. You can push the naked drives right into the slots. 
you can push the naked drives right out of the slots. That sounds way dirty than it should be. It's very nerdy, in fact. <laughs> in practice, again, as you saw a little earlier, I found this a little bit clumsy getting the drive aligned right to slide in smoothly, but they did slide in perfectly and connect correctly each and every time, so there's no chance to even mess that up. And at this point, it's worth giving a shout out to WD, who did supply me with five of their helium fueled eight terabyte WD RED drives. Now these are drives specifically designed for NAS use, network attached storage. I mean, this specific, this isn't really network attached storage because it has USB instead of the network cable that a lot of other Drobo uh, models come with, and they do. If you wanted to do it that way, attach it to your entire network instead of a single computer at a time, absolutely you can do that. This particular model just has USB 3, uh, well, USB C 3 going on. And the largest priority for the design of the WD RED drives is reliable ability in very harsh situations so in data centers and stuff where things tend to get very 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 hot which would murder a lot of regular drives far quicker than they will these uh, these are designed to put up with just all kinds of abuses and stuff they are not particularly quiet especially when compared to the likes of wd blacks my favorite flavor of drive and what i've got in my machine back there because it is very very reliable and also very very quiet but this will put up with a lot more abuse than the WD Blacks will. But yeah, the long and the short of it is WD Red Drives are the hardest to kill. They come in massive capacities and they don't mind being baked. Now, when it comes to temperature, see if I can put this in without seeing it. Oh, I can't see what I'm doing. There we are. Pop that drive back in. The system will automatically recover. Uh, now, when it comes to cooling on this thing, there is a nice big quiet fan that covers the base of the entire back plate of the thing, spins at low speed, so it just pushes a gentle sort of uh, a channel of air through the drives at all times to keep them, help keep them nice and cool. So if you're not using WD Reds like I am, uh, you still will be okay using regular sort of WD uh, blacks or greens or blues or whatever you want to use in there, basically. It never, I mean, I put this thing through just horrendous stress tests and just it churned away at it constantly, sort of sending back and forth sort of five gig files back and forth and terabyte files back and forth for hours and hours and hours on end. Uh, and it never got, I mean, it never got even warm to touch. I mean, you can tell it's on because it's slightly warmer than room temperature, but it never, ever, ever got really hot. With the WD Reds in here, it is a little bit noisy, I will tell you that, because again, the WD Reds are designed for data center use and NAS use, where being quiet isn't the priority of their design. So if I was gonna use this in home use, I would probably go for the WD Blacks, maybe even the Blues. I prefer the Blacks. The Blacks are a little bit quieter than the Blues, quite honestly. Actual data throughput performance is, well, pretty much as expected. I should note that on my test machine, a 15-inch MacBook Pro Retina from early 2015, it does not have a USB-C 3.1 connection, so my tests were on a standard USB 3 connection. But that said, the throughput was pretty much exactly the same as my WD My Passport Wireless Pro Drive, the drive I currently use as my media drive for editing all of my videos, including when I work with 4K, and that works perfectly smoothly at this kind of performance level. The test you're currently seeing was with two of the five drive bays populated. And the data you can see in the lower part of the benchmark running on here about various video formats is in regards to very, very, very large and uncompressed formats of video files, not the normal out-of-camera H.264 video files that I and 99% of you out there will be editing with. So when it says it can't do 4K, that's only in respect to those massive uncompressed video files that only the absolute pros tend to work with anyway. So yes, if you want to use this as a work drive rather than a backup system, you absolutely can. And in fact, with all five drive bays populated, as you'd imagine, with more drives sharing the workload, the performance jumps up a chunk. So if you are using it as a work drive, you'd be better off, especially if the files you work with are especially large, in making sure all of the drive bays are populated. So now we come down to the who is this for kind of section of the review and this is the Drobo that's designed for the widest appeal. It's got the standard USB connection on it, it's nice and easy. It is the simplest, easiest, worry-free, think-free way to have a uh, redundant RAID array backup system or anything like that that you will find in your home. Running a, a traditional RAID requires a little bit of technical nous because they are a little bit finicky at times. You need to know exactly what you're doing and why you're doing it. With a Drobo, you don't. You just whack in the drives. And when the lights blink uh, red or yellow or whatever, you replace that drive. Or you pull out a smaller drive and put a bigger one in if you're running out of space. The um, little guide to the blinking lights is even inside the little faceplate here, which just makes life even easier for newbies out there. But if you use a lot of disk space in your home, if you're like me, a content creator, you go through a lot of video files and, and 4K stuff and all that kind of stuff, this 
is, is, is your backup device. I don't have to do any data recovery. I don't have to fiddle with settings. I don't have to readjust the RAID for the new disc or the new disc size that I popped in there. The Drobo takes care of it all. You just put in a drive and it does its thing. That, that's the benefit of the Drobo. It makes life super easy for what is traditionally a reasonably uh, complicated, well not complicated, but a, 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 but a situation that requires a certain technical know-how. This is dummy mode NAS basically. It takes, well, not dummy mode because it's very, very smart. Dummy mode for you. <laughs> it makes your life easier because you just don't need to worry about it. it. just You just let it do its thing. Now, the only drawback from using a Drobo system is because it uses its own proprietary special fancy magic RAID system. So if the Drobo itself happens to fail, like the hardware, happens to fail for whatever reason, it blows up, you've got a nasty lightning strike and it just blows out the entire circuit board or something dramatic. You need another Drobo to get those files back because if you pull out one of these drives and stick it on a regular uh, hard drive connection on your computer, your computer won't be able to read the format that these drives are in. That is the only real drawback to a Drobo. In absolute worst case scenario, the, hard the hardware itself fails you need to get another one in order to get your files back, which can be a pain in the ass. But that is an edge case scenario, and all in all, I would rather have the security confidence and reliability of what the Drobo does, and then put up with the, you know, the rare chance that I will have to get a new unit in order to get those files back. Like I said, it's best used as a backup device anyway, not a device where you work directly from. So if you do have to wait a while to get a new unit in to recover those files, it won't be uh, you know, something that stops you from being able to work. And if you are using one of these for day-to-day -day mission critical stuff, it might be a good idea to invest in a spare one and keep it on a box on a shelf, just in case, just in case. I mean, if it's mission critical, you should think about that sort of stuff, you know. If, if you can't work without it, then you should have a spare nearby. But there you go, that is the Drobo 5C. Quite a nifty little device, in my humble opinion. And again, thank you to WD for supplying the uh, tasty, tasty, eight terabyte, eight terabyte a piece. <laughs> WD Reds in there. Oh. Thanks for watching, I am Bloody, and we'll catch you next time.